Okay, welcome everybody to today's live webinar, Intro to Digital File Organization. My name is Rebecca Van Dusen. I'm a library associate here at the Champaign Public Library. If you've attended any tech workshops in person or virtually, you've probably seen me assisting or teaching those. Um, I also work at the information desk, so you may have seen me if you're in the library. Before I introduce our technology librarian, Susan Winkler, I'd like to mention some Zoom features. We also have a practicum student here with us, Chris. She is a practicum student with the University of Illinois iSchool, so she will be helping us teach part of today's class as well as answer questions if uh, those come through in chat. Um, back to Zoom features. So basically at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you're going to see some icons that are available. So you'll see a chat icon, kind of looks like a chat bubble. If you want to ask questions and you click on that chat bubble, it will let you type in a question which will come to us behind the scenes while Susan and Chris are presenting. Um, so anytime during the webinar, feel free to write in chat because we will help you answer those and pose those questions to Susan or to Chris. Um, you'll also see a raise hand button, kind of looks like a hand raise. Um, if you wanted to speak your question out loud rather than typing a bunch of stuff in chat, you can use that raise hand button. Sometimes that's easier. Um, you'll also see there's kind of at the bottom left ways you can adjust your audio settings like changing your speaker or microphone. Um, you'll also, let me see, let me just make sure I'm covering everything. You'll also get a link to today's um, handout. I'm going to put that in the chat during the webinar. Um, once you click on that, it's going to bring you to the slides that we're going to cover. So we'll also be sending that after class in an email. The email will have the slides as well as the link to the YouTube recording. So we record most of our webinars that go on YouTube and we tend to also send those to attendees. So you'll get that as well. If you miss out on the handout for today, don't worry, it'll come in that email later. All right, so without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce Susan Winkler and Chris. Hey, how are you guys today? Great, thank you. Hi, I'm doing well. Um, Rebecca, I just want to mention too that uh, we did have someone ask right before, before the workshop started um, if we'd be able to see them on camera. And with our webinar format that we're using, we do not see you on camera. Um, so the only folks you'll probably see on camera will be Rebecca, myself, and Chris today. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. So if we're ready, who's ready? I'm excited. This is one of my favorite my favorite uh, workshops to teach. Uh, I do want to mention this is kind of this is a standalone class, but it's also a standalone class next week. But if you can take them together, it's really going to open up the world of file storage and organization for you. So I do strongly recommend attending both workshops because um, it gives you a really good sense of both how to organize them and how to back things up or you know, what sort of storage method you might like um, to use in the future. And we do talk about um, like the cloud and we talk about physical storage uh, next week. So I do recommend attending both workshops if you can. So, or catch them later on YouTube. As we said, we do record these and put them up there later. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started and share my screen. And it is gonna get, what I say, it gets a little meta for a minute because once I share it, um, you're going to be able to see everything a second time, essentially. And I'm going to move that up there. And I'm going to minimize that. And we'll open up our PowerPoint to get started. Go ahead and put that up at the top corner. Actually, I'll put it down here so we don't have to see it as much. Okay. So today is our Intro to Digital File Organization class. Um, this one usually does run about an hour and a half. Uh, so at about the hour mark, we will go ahead and take a five five, seven minute break um, so everyone can, can kind of reset and maybe use the restroom if they need to or get a, get a snack or a drink. Um, so I will let you know when we're going to do that too so you don't have to stare at your screen for, for so long <laughs> and we'll try to move along fairly quickly. Um, things that we're going to cover today, and I do love this image because I had to add the little caption that his desk looks very clean but really your digital files are basically an extension of your of your desk at work or at home. Yeah. So um, he looks very uh, serious, like he's trying to find his his files there. So we're going to make it so you can easily find your files in the future. So uh, Chris is going to go over the first section here after I'm done with the agenda. 
So she's going to teach you how to create and save files. And again, we're, we're starting at a very, um, a very early foundation point today uh, because we don't know necessarily where everyone's at with their um, computer skills coming into the workshop. Uh, but we also know that for me, I like to explain that it's a lot like math where you need to know addition and subtraction before you can move on to multiplication and division and all the other things that build off of it. So since um, computers work in a very similar way, we need to figure out how to create things. Of course, we're gonna create files and save them and learn the difference between save and save as uh, before we move on to manipulating those files and uh, you know, organizing them. So we'll then go ahead and create some folders. Uh, we'll talk about renaming files and folders. Again, these are foundational tools that you can use. Once you figure out what organizational system you want to use, then you can go back in and you can rename things if you want so that they fit that organizational pattern. Okay, so we'll talk about naming conventions. These are things like whether or not you should have special characters in the names of your files or folders. Uh, we'll copy files and folders because sometimes it's it's um, easier if you have the same thing that you need to do each month. Like here at the library, we have monthly reports that we write, and I basically make a copy of last month's report and change it to September. And then because all of the fields are the same, so it's easy to just copy, and then I don't have to retype everything each month. We're going to talk about moving files and folders because again, if you decide on a new organizational system, that might mean and or necessitate you moving things from one place to another. And it's a very good foundational tool. And if you attended our keyboard and mouse class, we learned about drag and drop. And so uh, that is one method that you can use for moving files and folders that uh, we'll talk about today. And then we're going to talk about File Explorer. File Explorer is one of the uh, best, I think, it's one of the best ways to find uh, and explore for your folders and files on your computer. And we'll talk about file view, which is something you can do inside File Explorer. We'll talk about how to search for and find um, your files. So when I first thought of this class, I, I don't know if anyone's familiar with um, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which is a, um, a Harry Potter related book. Um, but I kind of wanted to call this Fantastic Files and Where to Find Them, uh, because I don't know about you, but it, a lot of times it's hard for me to remember what I named something before I put this organizational um, system in place and had my I, naming conventions of what I was going to call stuff. Um, so it's nice to know that you can search for stuff. Okay, we'll talk about the recycle bin as well. Uh, for those of you on Mac, this is the, the trash bin and we will have a class for Mac. Um, Rebecca will be teaching that in January for basically the same things here that we're doing, um, an introduction to Macs and then an introduction to files um, on a Mac. So look forward, look forward for that too. Okay, we'll talk about frequently accessed files, how to um, pin things that you access frequently on your computers. And then we'll go into some of the theoretical. So we're going to start with the technical stuff and then we're going to get into kind of the theoretical of the different ways you could possibly organize things. And again, it's all going to come down to you as an individual and what works best for you. So we'll give you the tools and we'll give you some of the concepts and then let you decide if you want to change what you're already doing. Or you might go and say, okay, I already, I already have all this down. Uh, at least I know I'm good to go. Okay, and then at the very end, we'll talk about additional resources that you can look at. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen and let, oops, let me jump out of that. And we'll let Chris go ahead and take over and she'll share her screen. All right. Okay, here we are. Now, as Susan said, um, we're going to start at really, really um, beginner level of building blocks of how we do things. And, and if you think at first, well, I already know this stuff. We're going to pick up speed, and it's going to get it's going to get more complicated as we go along. Um, but if it's you're at that point where okay, nope, this is all new to me. We're going to go nice and slow. Don't worry. And if you need to see something again next week, you want to do what we did here, and you can't remember what did I do? How did I make that happen? Um, we're going to have the video up, so you can just go back to the video link, which you'll get up in the email after this, um, and then you can watch it again. If something I did doesn't make sense, you can. Rewind me, have me say it again, pause me while you try it yourself. I do that with YouTube videos all the time. It's a great way to learn. So today we're going to start with Microsoft Word, which is basically like um, starting with a sheet of paper. So in my house, I have a, an actual 
filing cabinet. It's uh, one of those like old metal ones. And um, you have inside, I have um, folders for um, I don't, taxes, taxes of 2019, um, pictures, um, stuff about my house, you know, things like that, right? Because if I open the drawer and just put whatever piece of paper I might need later in the drawer and then just close the drawer again. And every time I want one of those pieces of paper, I have to go through all of the papers to find the one that I want. And so you make folders to sort them out, right? So that, so that you know it's easier to find what you want later on. So we're going to start this process talking about how to be very intentional with where we put things so that they're easier to find later on. Okay, so we are going to say that today, uh, my sister sent me a card in the mail. It's very nice. She wants me to get mail that isn't a bill or advertising. So I'm going to write her back, but my handwriting is terrible. So I'm going to type her a letter. So I would like to start with a blank sheet of paper. That's going to be a Microsoft Word file. And I'm going to show you how to find it. and then how to start writing. Now, we're gonna get out of our little PowerPoint slide, and here's what a, your normal computer should look like. Does everybody see this okay? Yes. Okay, great. So I wanna find Microsoft Word, and there's a, a couple different ways that you can open it. Um, with most of the things we're showing you today, there's two, three, four different ways to do what we're doing. That's okay. You might have said you might be saying, well, I've seen I've seen it done a completely different way. You know, that's fine. I want to make sure you have at least one way to do everything. And I might throw in a couple times where, oh, here's another way to do the same thing. But I don't want to confuse you. So um, so one way to find a program is to go down here where this little magnifying box is, right? And this just tells the computer that I want to search. You can if you don't see that down at the bottom of your screen, if you hit the little, see the little grid four square menu, Windows menu button, you can hit that and then this will show up. Um, so in this box, I'm going to type Word and it's going to say, do you mean this app? Yes, I do. So I can either double click this, right, with our learning back to our um, class from a couple weeks ago, mouse and keyboard basics. Um, so we're going to um, use the left button and I can double click this. I could also hit open, does exactly the same thing. Now, Word, depending on what version of Word you have, this might be what you see, you might see something slightly different and that's fine. Um, this is kind of a, one of the newer versions and because it's saying, would you like a letter? Would you like a resume? Um, would you like, you know, something to put pictures on? It's, this is just um, things that you can use, but today we're just going to use blank document. And I'm going to start with the date. It is September 21st. And I'm going to say, dear Renee. Oops. Thanks for the card. I miss you. Love. Okay, here's the letter. Now, I might not be finished with it. Maybe this is enough. Maybe I want to um, come back to it and put some more in it later, right? So I need to save this. So again, there's a couple different ways to do it. I'm just going to show you one way. We're going to go up to this file menu up here. And uh, it's going to uh, bring up all the things I can do right now with this. I could just print it out if I'm ready to, but that's not what we're going to do today. We're, we're going to do something that's called save as. Um, we're going to learn today the difference between save, which I'll show you in a couple minutes, and save as. Save as is when I want to create a completely new file. This is uh, a completely standalone, whatever came before, or I've never had this before. It's a completely new thing. I'm going to use save as. Now, for a computer, it's kind of like our um, address when we get mail, right? So there's my address where I live, um, one main street, and then there's my name, Chris. So I can have more than one person who lives in my house, you know, Joan, 
also lives at one main street, but if mail comes for her because it is a different name, she'll get it. Or if my friend, if another friend with, has my name, Chris lives at a different address, that's okay. So it's two parts of naming a file. Where do I want to put it? Where does it live? And what's its name? Okay. So we're going to put things today on the desktop. We're going to be working with the desktop a lot. The desktop is just like that guy's desktop in the picture a couple of slides ago, where that's where you keep all the stuff you use a lot, right? So um, you want to have it out where you can find it easily. You put it on the desktop. So now I have to call it a name. Word's going to suggest the first couple words in the first line of whatever I typed, and that's fine. But I actually want to choose to call it something else. I'm going to call it letter to Renee. And now this file, because I did save as, exists on my desktop right here. I move that across. We'll talk about moving things in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, if, you've, if you've not seen that before, we'll talk about it in a little bit more detail in a second. So now it's that this is out here and on my desktop, if I want to open it, I just double click on it. And there's what I wrote. Now say I decide I'd really like to add a little bit more. I love you. Now, I don't want to do save as because I don't want to make another folder. I just want to save this one with the changes. So in that case, we're going to go to back up here to file. This is a case where I don't want to make another one I want to save it with the changes that I made. So we hit save. Now, if you'll notice up in the corner, very top left corner up here, there's this little, it looks like an old floppy disk, right? Who remembers the little square floppy disks we used to use? So if I hit that button, it does exactly the same thing as going to file and coming down and selecting save. Okay. So now if we close this file, I come back to it later. Right? There it is. I love you's in here. That's great. Let's say I realize, oh, wait a minute. I said that twice. I don't want to do that. So I delete that again. If I want to close out of this, Microsoft is going to tell me, hey, you made a change, but you didn't save it. So if you close this, and then open it again, it's that what you, what you just did, deleting I love you on there, that's not gonna, it's that I love you's gonna be back. So are you sure, do you want me to save it? Yes, I do. And then it closes. That's something that a nice word, that word does for you because if you had opened it and made a change and then not hit save and then closed it, then when you opened it again, all your changes would be gone. So it's always important when you're working on something, doing a lot of typing, a lot of typing, you want to hit save every so often just to make sure that if anything happens, the power goes off or, um, I don't know, you run out of battery or whatever, that your whatever you changes you've made, all the typing you've done doesn't get lost. Okay, great. So getting back to our slideshow for just a second, we're going to review and make sure what we just talked about. We had our blank document. We made our letter to my sister. We went to save as. We told it, where does it live? It lives on the desktop for right now. And what we wanted to call it, letter to my sister. At this point, are there any questions? You can raise your hand using the icon at the bottom as Rebecca showed you, or you can put it in the chat. I'll wait just a second. I don't see. And you can also feel free so to far. email these questions to us later, and we will we will respond um, back to you via email later on. I think you're good for now, Chris. I'll let you know if there's yeah. anything that pops up. Thank you. So now we're going to talk get a little bit more into file organization, right? Because remember, if I put that letter, that piece of paper, in the filing cabinet, just on the desktop, right? Eventually, I'm going to have 40 letters to my sister all on the desktop. And that's, it's messy and it's hard to find everything. 
and it's yeah it's just not a good good system for when you're going to eventually have a lot of files so we're going to start putting things in folders so we learned in our keyboard in our i think last week um the right button no, that was two weeks ago the right button on our mouse is kind of the menu button right anything you point to with your mouse and then you hit the right click button, the computer's gonna tell you here are all the things you can do with whatever you're pointing to, right? So we are going to say that we want to, on our desktop space, make a new folder. So let's show you how that works. So here's our desktop space. I'm gonna point to it. I'm gonna right click my mouse. I'm gonna go down to new because I want a new folder. Click folder. Now you can see that it's highlighted, right? Right now it's telling me, ah, you told me where to put it and you told me what it is, it's a folder, but it still needs a name. I can type letters. And that's great, no problem. And so if I wanna put all my letters in here, then they won't all be sitting out on the box like this. But let's say I decide, ooh, actually, I think I want to have letters to both my sisters. And I should be writing letters to Anita as well, my sister Anita. So this folder probably should say letters to Renee. I want to change it. Or sometimes if you are making a new folder, right? I've come over here to the desktop. I've hit, clicked new and come over to folder. And then I accidentally click someplace else and, oh, Wrap. Now it's called new folder, but I wanted to call it something else. You can very easily rename folders. Now, notice if we go point to a folder and do the right click, right? We get the menu. It's a little bit different than the menu you get if you just click on the background. So almost all the way to the bottom, there's something called rename. And see how it's lit up again? It's telling me, okay, now I understand that whatever you put in this box, you, are, are, that's what's gonna be called from now on, okay? So then I can go over here and make, rename, and now the folder's called Letters to Anita. I can go in here and rename this as many times as I want to. Oh, I made a typo. I'm going to fix that as many times as you want to. As, what the computer's going to do whatever you tell it to, and if you tell it, now I want you to call this folder something else, that can absolutely be done. Okay? So let's talk for a couple minutes about what you might want to call your folders. Here we go. There was our little rename. So now that I have letters, what happens over time? Maybe I want to make folders that are, a folder that is letters 2021 and letters 2020 and letters 2022 or letters with the September 2021. In it. I mean, you can name it anything you want to, as long as it makes sense to you. The idea is that you will be able to remember it later. Um, you, as you saw, the program that I had, you, I could say letters, space, to, space, Anita, and it was very easy to read. Going back a couple of generations of, of software, computers couldn't understand when you put spaces in the title they didn't, in the name. They didn't understand that. So you had to put an underscore between words. You might see people do that. September underscore 2021 underscore letters or a dash between or a period between. You see that, night, that convention um, a lot because the computers used to need that. And you might say, well, I don't, I don't need it now. My computer understands. But if you're ever sending it to somebody who has an older computer or if you're working on a computer that's older, um, maybe it won't understand that. So it's a, that's a good practice. Um, you can also make 
um, use something like this, where all of the words are capitalized. Really awesome cat photos. Oh, probably I should have had that as a capital P, but you can see how that makes it easier to read, right? Um, using special characters, again, that was something that computers didn't used to understand. Some versions of the software do now, but some of them still, if you're using an older version, do not. So it's a good idea not to use those. Um, you could make the um, name as long as you want, <laughs> but keep in mind, this is pretty much what you're going to see. It's going to um, truncate it. It's what they call it when they put the three little dots unless you actually select it and then you can see the whole name. So if it's something that can be shorter so that you can see most of it or put the important stuff up front in the, or in the beginning, that's a good idea. So it's easier to find. Um, Susan's going to show you later when we have a whole list, when we see our files not as little icons but as a list, that sometimes there are things that you want um, up at the top to show up at the top. And you can put numbers at the beginning of your of your title, like here, where we have zero, zero, dot. No matter what else is in this list, this thing is probably going to be at the top. Because numbers come before letters, according to the computer. That's how it alphabetizes. Is there any other questions? I don't see any questions so far. OK, great. We'll keep moving on. So as Susan was talking about earlier, sometimes it's easy to copy a whole letter or a file of any kind or a um, folder or a folder full of stuff. You can copy just about anything. So um, let me show you how this works. Get out of this. So. Here was my letter, right? And it's a letter to Renee. And I want to basically say the same stuff to Anita. Maybe a little bit different, but pretty much the same. There's two ways to do this, and I'm going to show you the maybe more complicated way first. But we're going to open the letter, and we're going to use that Save As feature. Because now I want a completely separate new file, right? And that's when you use Save As. Save as, where do I want it? Desktop is fine. What do I want to call it? Letters to Renita. Now you can see up here at the top that this is the file that I'm in now. So any changes that I make to this will not show up in that letters to Renee file because that's this is a whole new one, right? I'm not making any changes to the Renee file. So I'm going to change the name. Uh, she didn't send me a card, so I don't want to say that, or it'll be obvious I'm just copying Renee's letter. Uh, it was good to talk on the phone last week. I miss you, love, Chris. Now, we're going to go up here, and we're just going to hit the little icon, the little save, the little disk. And now it's saved. Every, all the changes that I've made are saved and will be there the next time I open it. So now we have... Letters to Nita and a letter to Renee. As we talked about last week, making windows, I can, this is taking up the full screen right now, but I want to look at more than one at a time. So I use the, oh, Susan, I'm sorry, can you remind me? What's the, what is it? Minimize, minimize, right? Yep. Minimize or restore down. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put this over here. And I want to open the letter to Renee, too. So now you can see this one still exists. And, and this new one now is I can make changes in. And now I have letters to both. Now, I'm going to give you a different um, example of a time when you might want to um, copy a folder that has a bunch of stuff in it. So let's say that my good friend Joan Smith uh, applied to a woman for a job. Here is her cover letter to Mr. Jones. Uh, 
She started with a, a form letter and she's just starting on it. That's good. That's okay. See, there's the form. There's her um, cover letter. And here's her resume. Enable editing is sometimes what it does when it isn't sure if you want to protect it. We can talk about that more later if anyone has any questions about that, if you've seen that before and want to know. But Joan Smith, and she put all her stuff in here, and that's her resume. Now, Joan's decided she also wants to apply to Target. She says you're going to need all that same stuff, but she, it has to say Target on it instead of Walmart. So we're going to point to our folder that we want to copy, right-click for the menu to make sure we get all the things we can do, we're going to go copy. Now, where do I want to put it? Let's just put this all on the desktop to start with. So I'm pointing to my desktop. I'm going to go right click to menu to get my all the things I can do. And because I have something copied, I can paste it. Now you'll notice it says app to Walmart copy. It's going to put dash copy after anything that you've copied. This is important because remember, these two things live at the same address now. So they have to have a different name. If I tried to take, try to um, rename this and take the copy off, it's going to say, yeah, you, you can't do that. I can't, I can't understand in the same place and call it the same thing. So we're going to need to give this a different name. So we're going to say app to target. Now this is a, kind of a personal best practice I find. But now I'm going to go in and make changes. Here are the same files that are in the Walmart one. Because remember, these two live in different places now. This has the same name, but one lives on Main Street and one lives on Green Street. So that's fine. But now I don't want to get confused. I don't want to open this one and think that I'm in my Walmart folder when I'm in my target folder. So I'm going to rename these files before I even open and start with them. Right. Oops. Rename. Now, when I open this, I know by looking up here at the top that I'm in the target one. So I'm never going to confuse myself and be making changes and then think, wait a minute, is this the, is this the, is this the correct one? I make all the changes I want to make and then I, don't want to make a new one now. I, I just want to hit save. And now I've made my changes. And now I have app to Walmart and app to Target. Now you see me moving things around, right? I want my apps kind of closer together, so I move it over here so I could see. It always is going to take the first available spot and put a new file in. But nope, I don't want it down there. I wanted, I wanted it to the center of the screen. So as we talked about, a uh, quick review from a couple weeks ago, if you want to, uh, when you put your mouse on something, right, you're pointing to this file, you're going to left use your left mouse button, your left click, and just hold it down and don't let it, don't let go, just one time, and then you can move it around the screen, and it'll move with you until you let go of that button. And then it's going to leave it where you where you where you left it, right? Move it around with one left click. Now, if you click twice, it's going to open, and then you have a couple minutes while you open, and then you bring it back, and you shut it down, and now you can move it again. So I've done that a million times. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Just make sure you only click one time, and you can move it around the screen. Now we can also decide that I have these perfectly good folders here. And eventually I'm going to have letters to Renee, 20 of them. So I want them all in their own folder. If I click on this, 
one, one click, right, with the left button. And then I move it on top of the folder and see how the, the folder lights up, the little square and it lights up. It says, this is where you're going to put this. You're going to put it inside this folder. Yes. So I let it go. Right? I'm going to do the same thing to put letters to Anita in the letters to Anita file folder. Rather. So I left click once. I move it over here. The folder lights up. That's where I want it. And now when um, I look Chris, what? you may want to mention yes. that instead of you're actually holding down the left mouse button rather than just clicking once. Yes, correct. Absolutely. It will, um, it's going to hold on to whatever it is I've clicked until I let the mouse button go. Once I've let it go, then it moves. Then that's where it is from now on. Um, I'm going to make a folder. Remember how we do this, we go to point to our desktop where we want to put the folder. We do a right mouse click for the menu. We make a new folder. I'm going to call it applications because I want to have all my job applications in one place. So I'm going to take my app to Walmart folder that has those files in it. I'm going to click once and hold the mouse button down until I move it over to where the applications is and that folder and let it go. I'm going to do the same thing with the one to target. One mouse click, hold it, move the mouse, folder lights up, let it go. Now when we look, both of those folders are in this folder. And you can do that pretty much as much as you want to, but remember, it needs to be so that you remember where it is, so that the so that the organization makes sense to you. Okay. Let's go back to our slideshow for just a second. We saw how to copy files and whole folders with stuff and how to move things around our screen and also into folders. Are there any questions? All right. We're yeah, going to switch any. over so that Susan can take it from here. Oh, let me stop. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, I was just going to mention, too, that uh, when you are clicking on the desktop, and you're doing that right click to make a new folder, make sure there isn't already something on that desktop. Uh, because as Chris, as Chris explained, you get different options depending on what you're clicking on. So if you click on a blank space on the desktop, you get that option to create a folder. If you clicked on a program or something, you would get different options, okay, like she said. All right, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And it's, again, going to get a little meta for everyone. And then I'll put that down below. And we'll jump back into our um, presentation here. Oh, where did it go? Uh, let me find it again. OK, I'm going to have to. Should have been I think it's here. on your desktop there. This is, that's the Windows 10 one. Where did today's go? Okay, interesting. All right, well, let me find it again, because apparently to jump in here and get it from our downloads, not a big deal. Can drop that in there. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. We had to jump back into it. Not sure where it went. Um, and we'll come on down to talking about File Explorer. Okay, so File Explorer is the f Windows 10 folder and file management app for your Windows 10 computer. Um, you might also have one that's a little bit earlier um, for earlier versions of Windows, of Windows um, like Windows 6, or sorry, Windows 7, 8, um, XP, Vista. Um, they all have a version of this, uh, this thing called File Explorer. Okay, uh, and File Explorer is typically pinned to the taskbar. And remember, if you were here from last week, we talked about the taskbar and how that's at the bottom of your screen, typically. Um, and File Explorer looks like a manila envelope, or manila folder, rather, um, a fold file folder, and then has a little blue, um, almost like a container for it. So whenever you see the 
app symbol um, that I'm pointing at here in the top right corner, this is what the file manage file explorer uh, app icon looks like. Okay, and when you open file explorer, you have a bunch of different things you can possibly do. Up here at the top, this section is called the ribbon, um, and that's true for most programs like uh, Word and Excel and other programs too. It's this ribbon up here, which allows you to do various different things. It's kind of like where you, you can think of it as your toolbar, where all of your tools are located. Down below that, you have your file path. Now, when Chris was talking about um, addresses. This is a, a totally great analogy for talking about files because your file path is exactly like your address in a way because you first have to tell everyone your name, then you have to tell them your street address, then you tell them your city and your, uh, your state and your zip code. The file path works in a similar way because as you saw she had those two folders for the job applications. So the first app folder was applications, then it was app to target. Then it was resume for target, okay? So when you have those three steps, your file path will include all of those steps that it takes to get to the file. So you're gonna go, and if you were using your physical uh, filing cabinet at home, same idea. You would open you know, your filing cabinet labeled A, right? And then you would go find your applications folder. And then in there you might have what's called a nested folder. Uh, which is that sec that folder that goes to the application for Target and has all those materials, your resume, your cover letter, any supporting documentation. Okay, so the file path is really important to help you get to your files. Okay, the navigation pane over here on the left hand side gives you some of those um, points, those folders and things. So if you think of this like you would your physical filing cabinet, these might be things that you know you accessed often enough that you actually take them out of your alphabetical filing system order and put them at the very front of your filing cabinet. So if you know that you access your uh, your budget for the your yearly budget uh, once a day, you might put the yearly budget at the very front of your physical filing cabinet because you know you're gonna grab it every single day and add whatever you need to add to your budget, okay? So that's like the section that says quick access here in the navigation pane, that's a um, underneath where it says quick access. Those are the things that you would access uh, more often, okay? And then under that, this PC is like having another one of those uh, drawers in your filing cabinet where you're gonna go ahead and put all your things. Okay, over here on the, um, the right hand side of the window for File Explorer, you can also see the view of the files and folders in each location. So for example, this one says, you know, the frequent folders that we access. So the computer keeps track of how often you access certain folders. And it's like, okay, these are the things you access most frequently. And then things that are recent, like things that you've downloaded, um, all that kind of stuff, they go into specific folders. So that's why you have a downloads folder over here where all the stuff you download from the internet, say someone sends you a picture um, and you wanna download it and keep it for yourself, it's gonna go into that downloads folder. Well, the downloads folder, you know, you, occasionally you're gonna wanna clean that out and move those things to where it makes more sense for them to be for you. And we'll get into that part when we talk about the organized files. But I just want you to know that everything kind of exists in this thing called File Explorer. And there are a couple of different views for File Explorer. So I'm gonna jump out of that. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at File Explorer live. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and open File Explorer from down here on the taskbar. You can see that little icon there. Um, there are other ways to open it. If you don't see it on your taskbar, you can come over here uh, and tap here to search. You can see that it's recent. I opened it recently, so it's right there. But you could also search for it by looking for File Explorer and it comes up right here, this mess match. You can open it from where it says open or you can click once there and it'll open your file explorer, okay? So within file explorer, you have a couple of tabs across the top at the top of that ribbon. So the home view allows you to have certain things that you can do with files and folders once, you're, once you've selected one of them. Okay, so if I select, for example, the downloads folder, and you know it's selected because it's got that, that box around it, just like we, we selected the folders when we wanted to rename them. So if you click on it, that's selected. It's not open yet, but it's just selected. Okay, and you'll notice that then you get some different options of what you can do with that folder. Okay, so if I click off of it, 
these are all, everything on the ribbon is grayed out. If I click on it and select it, then some options come up of what you can do with that folder, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find where our applications folder lives with Jones Applications to Target and Walmart. If you don't remember where we put it, that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna try to search for it later. But the first thing we're gonna do is we know that we've put it on the desktop. So what we would do is come over here either to the quick access and tap on desktop. Again, that's telling us that it's in that folder or jump back up here for just a second. Um, let me jump out there and show that again. Okay, so when we jump in File Explorer for the first time, we're on the home tab up here at the top and we know we wanna to go to desktop. We can pick it from the quick access menu on the left-hand side, or we can pick it from here where it says frequent folders, or we can even pick it from down here under this PC where it says desktop, okay? So there's lots of ways to get to the desktop. But if we go ahead and tap on desktop, and now we do wanna open it, so we're gonna go ahead and open it, and now you'll see our file path here, um, if everybody can see that, right underneath where it says clipboard, there's a little icon of the computer here, and then it says this PC and then desktop, this is the file path, okay? So right now, our file path, this is like our name, this is our address, this is our city, and then our applications is gonna get us to our state and our zip, okay? So just think about that, because when you start to organize your files, if you have to go step, 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 and have this file path be really long to get to it. That's gonna take a long time for you to get to by clicking into each of these various um, folders and places. So that's another thing to consider when you're talking about how you wanna organize things. Um, if, it's, if it's a file that's nested, we say nesting, in a folder that's inside a folder that's inside another folder, inside another folder, you can see how that gets kind of um, time consuming and a little confusing to find those files. Okay, so you wanna keep that in mind too. Okay. So once we're in here and we can see our applications, this is now the contents of the desktop that we can get to and open or do something with, okay? So once you're in here, you can do the same things that you could do on the desktop. I could come down here and select presentation, um, digital file organization. I could right click on it and I could rename it or I could copy it and then paste a new version of it over here, paste a copy. So you can still do all of the same things that we were doing on our desktop screen when we're in File Explorer 2, okay? We can also add a new folder, just like we could to the desktop. We can right click and say new and then folder and make a new desktop folder, okay? We can also do that up here. If you see the shortcut here where it says new folder, I can click on, does everybody see that up on the top with the ribbon there where it says new folder? So I can just click right on that and make a new folder, okay? I can also use the things up here to move or copy stuff just like we did on the desktop. So I could, um, I'm gonna use this last week's Windows PC presentation here for a second. And if I wanted to move this, I could say move to. So instead of dragging and dropping on the desktop like we were, if that's difficult for you, you can also use the move to tool up here in File Explorer. And I can say move to, and it's already on the desktop. So I don't wanna move it to the desktop. I could move it to say documents or wherever else I wanna move it, okay? Same thing with copy to. If you don't wanna right click and say copy, you can also say select it and say copy to. Okay, so I just wanna let you know that you have those, those abilities to do shortcuts there too. Okay, the other thing you can do with File Explorer is you can view the properties of a file. And this can be useful when you're trying to figure out what type of file it is, if it's a picture or if it's a, a spreadsheet or um, how big the file is, and that you can do by looking at properties. So if we look up here, if I select this presentation intro to Windows PC, and I click on the box that says properties. This is gonna show me the properties of that particular file. So it's gonna tell me that it's a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. It opens with PowerPoint 2016, which means that's the default program the computer is gonna to use to open it. Tells me the location. Again, the location is the file path. So we're gonna to get to the desktop and that's where it's located. And it tells me when it was created, last time we did something to it, 
<clears throat> and the last time it was accessed. So that's good too from a standpoint of organizing your files because it also helps you remember if you've created more than one version, like we said, remember you can use save as, save and save as. If you've created more than one version of something, you can come in here to see when you last modified it to know which is the more recent version. Okay, so that's something to point out as well. Um, you can also look at, if you go into the share on the ribbon, you can share a file through email or you can um, password protect it or remove access. That's all stuff we're not really gonna cover today, but I just want you to know it's there. And you can also go to view and the tab view can be super helpful, especially if you have images because you can view them with icons. And the icons can be either, um, like we have here, where it says, you know, PowerPoint, and it gives me a little image of what it looks like. Or when I look at applications, and it shows me that these are both Word documents, because they have that little W that means Word, okay? And I'm gonna jump back up here, back to this one. If I have photographs or pictures, so if I come over here to my pictures folder and I'm looking at my pictures, and I have this picture called Puppy One, if I can look at the icons up here in the view tab, I look at the large icons or medium icons or small icons, that's gonna show me the picture. If I look at it under list though, does everybody see where I clicked up here on the top under list? Now it says Puppy One, but I can't see what the picture actually looks like. So if you have a bunch of pictures and they just say, you know, IMG underscore six, IMG underscore seven, you don't know what's actually on those images. One way to know is to go ahead and select in File Explorer to look at the large icons, extra large icons or large icons. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and head back to desktop for us to give us that example. Okay, so uh, the other way you can do that where you can switch and kind of toggle between the view here, if you don't wanna go all the way to that third tab, from my home screen, my home tab here, I can also do it down here in the bottom right hand corner. So if you see where there's, there's a little one that looks a little bit like a list and then one that looks like a picture, if I switch back and forth, here's what it looks like as a list and here's what it looks like with icons, okay? So you can tell very quickly, I mean, you can still see the, the little icons here, but you have other information that you're getting when you do it in list view as opposed to the uh, picture, picture view or icon view or thumbnail view, okay? Any questions about that? before we move on. So I think it's important to spend some time with File Explorer um, because this is really the way that you can figure out how the computer organizes things and how to organize them yourself. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do some naming convention uh, examples here real quick with those applications. And then we're gonna try to search for some files. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into the applications folder and we have our app to target. I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy. So I'm gonna right click and say copy and then paste. And you'll see it says copy now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna rename this as 01.joan, okay? And again, this is just for the sake of this demo. Um, naming conventions aside, I would usually not just name a file with that because it's not enough information, okay? But I can also do, um, let's copy this file and we'll paste it in here again. So let's say we, we applied to Target twice, right? We applied six months ago and now we're gonna apply again for another job there. And so we're gonna take this and we're gonna rename it 01 um, resume, okay? So you'll see how it immediately puts the 01 ahead of Joan um, because again, numbers come before letters. So whenever you're in list view, you'll always see those things that have the numbers in front of them will come before the alphabetical things, okay? So that's one way to use that those naming conventions. Another thing you might wanna do, especially if you're reapplying somewhere, is to put add a date to the actual um, file too. So if I wanted to rename this, and let's say we're applying today, so I know this is my most recent updated version of my resume. I might go ahead and do that and then put 
maximum, okay? Like that, okay? Now, since it is still a number, it is still gonna be ahead of the numbering or the alphabetical convention, but you can see also that 01, if I have said 01, I might immediately think, oh, that means January, as opposed to the full date of, you know, September 21st, 2021. So again, what you decide to do for your naming conventions and your organization, that is gonna matter, especially to you, but also to others if you're sharing files through work. So keep in mind if, you're, if your work location has a set of standards that you're supposed to follow for naming conventions. Okay, all right. Any questions about what we've done so far? I don't see anything. With, with File Explorer? Okay, so one of the things I, I tend to do a lot is if I can't remember where I put something, I have to go and search for it. And File Explorer is another thing you can use to search for those files. So if I open File Explorer here, and I want to find, let's say I want to find that 09.21.2021 file, because I know I worked on it, um, I know that I worked on it today, and I know that I named it with today's date. So what I can do there is I can come into File Explorer and I can search individual folders or places, or I can search the whole computer. So if I go to this PC, this is our whole computer. Um, we have a couple extra things down here that are um, shared things that we have plus the library has. So I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom up a little bit so you don't, we don't confuse, confuse with that too much, okay? But now I have this PC. I can search, if you see over here with the magnifying glass is, again, when you see a magnifying glass and it doesn't have a plus or minus, it's usually going to be searching. If it has a plus or minus, it usually means zoom in or zoom out. So we're gonna search this PC for that file that I just created. So what I might do is say 09-21-2021. And then note that I get this file that says 09-21-2021 Joan resume. I've found it now. So if I click on it, it's gonna go ahead and open it for me. And I can say enable editing. I actually renamed it. So this is actually the cover letter. So I should go in and rename this as cover letter. Um, again, that would help make sure that I'm keeping my files, um, uh, I'm understanding and organizing them based on what they are. So here, if it was my cover letter, and then I found it, I can use it, and then I can do file, save, make any changes I want, go to save, and save it. But now I know where it's located, right? I was able to find it very easily. So now if I wanted to find it again to rename it, I can open it up and I can say file, and then I can go in and do a save as, make a new version of it, and save it with the correct, um, correct name. Or I can come in here and say, okay, I need to figure out where I actually put this file. And then, I, so I might say, okay, Joan resume in general, and hit enter. And once I hit enter, this is going to search the entire PC which if you have lots and lots of files, this can take a long time. So it's good to remember any sort of files and folders that you can about where you put something that will help you to remember where you've put it so that this doesn't take quite as long, okay? But you can search for that file by picking a specific location or the entire PC, okay? So you can see it's gonna take a little while for this. And I do want us to get to take a break. So I'm going to let this continue searching uh, and we'll take a little break. And then when we come back, we'll see what search results we get for putting in um, Joan and resume. Okay, so we'll let this run itself in the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll stop sharing for a moment and we'll come back once that's complete. And I'll start my video. And now if anybody would like to take a quick break, um, if you'd like to get a snack or uh, a drink or um, use the restroom or whatever you wanna do, um, we'll come back at about 3.05. So everybody can just, and for me, you know, I can just do a little stretching, look away from the screen, because it's good to look away occasionally so that um, you don't get too much eye fatigue too from looking at the screen so much. Uh, so go ahead and look away if you want. And then we'll come back after that has generated our search of this PC. So, okay.
Um, if anybody wants to, uh, do we have any vote for those of us that are going to stick around for what we want to what we want to watch? <laughs> I was thinking explore.org, um, which is a great site that has lots of fun. So I'll go ahead and share my screen again. And let's go ahead and open. I'm going to open a new browser. See, it's almost almost done processing everything for us. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and go to explore.org for those of us that are hanging out here for a minute. Um, if you're unfamiliar with explore.org, explore.org has uh, live animal cams um, across different places in the world. And they have Zen cams, which are things like oceans with waves. Um, you can look at bears or birds. I think we should look at maybe look at some bears and see if we get some bears in Alaska and see what we get. So now here are some bears in Alaska. Let's see if we see any. Looks like they're salmon fishing. Yep, so there's a bear over there. And I don't know if everybody else is hearing the sound coming out of my headset, but you can also hear the, the sound of the water here too as they're searching. Okay, and I'll put that down below. And we'll give everybody another couple of minutes to take a little it's break. It's snowing in Alaska. <laughs> I have a friend up there now and she said it snowed last night. Mm -hmm. I follow a couple of um, places. I follow uh, Denali National Park on Facebook and they're, um, they were doing the, their fall photos. Um, it looks so beautiful. Uh, but they were saying that, you know, their fall season doesn't last a super long time because it, it turns more quickly to winter. So, so yeah, we got some birds here too. So it's birds and bears today. <laughs> But you also have um, cat rescues, um, you know, so we'll just give another couple minutes here. And then we'll take a look. Are there any other questions for those that for those of you that are hanging out that you'd like to ask during our little break? Feel free, you can pop them in the chat if you'd like. And we can answer things. So our brown bears. I'm going to pull this up just a little bit so we can see if they've I don't see them anymore. All right, maybe we'll switch cams. Let's go, let's look at some pandas. Look at some pandas instead. There you go. Pandas that are playing. <laughs> and I'll edit this part out for the, um, the YouTube video because people can stop and pause that whenever they'd like, but. For those of us live, we can watch some pandas. <laughs> okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it say where the pandas are? Uh, these pandas, I believe, are, let's see, usually. Uh, yes, so they are in Sichuan. Um, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce that correctly, but China. Yeah, so yes. And uh, I had the the fortunate opportunity a few years back to go to the um, zoo in uh, Tennessee and see their pandas, and that in Memphis, that was a lot of fun, and. One of the pandas very much, I think, enjoyed having people take his pic his or her picture or their picture um, because they stuck their tongue out at me <laughs> while I was taking their picture, which was very cute. So. And I think we had, I think San Diego might be the other location in the U.S. with some pandas. The National Zoo had some for a long time. I don't know if they still do. Oh, DC, yeah, D.C. probably does, too. I think they do. I think yeah, it's they do. Three. I saw pandas there when we visited DC. So I think it's those those three three locations in the U.S. Yes, but they're very fun. Oh, it's like can't even. <laughs> Aww. And then um, there's also cats and dogs. Let's try a cat rescue. We'll see if there's kitten. A little kitten. So here's some kittens. Of course, they're all napping right now. <laughs> That seems about right for kittens. They probably had a rough, uh, rough day of play already. Let's see about some puppies. Let's see. Um, 
There's guide dogs. But maybe I could find puppies specifically. And a lot of these are um, shelters and um, animal sanctuaries. Oh, let's go for Zen. Let's do a little Zen. So here's the ocean for a Zen. Looks like there's one person possibly, if that's a person or another creature out there enjoying it. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing that and we'll let everybody kind of come back to us. Um, so I will stop sharing the Zen cam. And I'll bring my camera back up. Okay. So if you if you haven't experienced explore.org, um, that was our nice little little break moment um, to take a look. And hopefully you'll be able to get a snack or or take um, get a drink of water or whatever. Um, and are ready to jump back into our file searching. Yay! Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. And at this point, hopefully our file explorer, when I pull it up, I'm gonna move that down over here. Actually, I'll move it up in the corner, up there. So it's a little bit out of our way. Okay, so we can see that we searched the entire PC for Joan and resume. And we're gonna get anywhere that the word Joan and the word resume appears because I did not specify to put the underscore between it or anything in front of it. It's gonna find any files where those two things appear, okay? So that is one way to search for a file if you don't remember where you put it, okay? And you can see it also does give us the a little bit of information about the file path. Um, so for example, here it says, you know, users, librarian. That's because the profile for the computer is librarian. We've got it on desktop, applications, app to Walmart, okay? Or desktop, applications, app to target, okay? So that's one way you can search for files using File Explorer, um, which I definitely appreciate having, having that. Um, and that works if you don't know the umbrella folder or the folders that you've you know you've put it in. Um, if you know the um, umbrella folder, like you know that it's on desktop, you can search specifically desktop and then say, you know, Joan resume and see what comes up. And you can see that that went much faster because I knew that at least it was in desktop. Okay. Okay. So um, you can also search for files using the search in Windows in Windows 10 down here to search for files. If I did Joan's resume here, I can find my, the best match it's gonna give me might be the one that has the date in front of it, um, but we can also see the documents for this PC here, okay? And that's using the Windows 10 built-in search, type here to search, okay? Alrighty, any questions about searching for files? Um, capitalization here doesn't really matter when you're searching for the file. Um, as you can see, I put lowercase and it still found all the Jones that were with a capital J. Okay. Questions about that? No searching questions. for files? Okay. So I really tend to, I, I mean, I use this a lot when I'm searching for things that I, where I can't remember where I put them. Um, now I have a better organizational system because I've listened to my uh, to our handout and the advice that I've gleaned from others to make this presentation. Um, so I don't have to do this quite as often to search for files. Um, all right, let's go ahead and talk about the recycle bin. Of course, I moved that up there and now I'm going to move it over here. <laughs> okay, so the recycle bin, and if you see over here, our recycle bin, it's up in the top. Um, for us, it's up in the top uh, left corner here. And what you can do with the recycle bin is it's the place where whenever you delete a file or a folder, it's gonna go to the recycle bin first. So it's just like if you took a piece of paper and you wrote something on it and you crumpled it up and you threw it in your trash can. You can still rescue it when it's in your trash can in your office. However, once the trash has been emptied, then it's a lot harder to get it back. So the recycle bin works the same way. So essentially whatever is in the recycle bin can be restored or then you can go and empty the recycle bin, which would take it away completely, okay? So 
If you delete a file, it's going to go to the recycle bin. So let's go ahead and say in our applications, um, our app to target where we've built something kind of confusing here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these two extra files that I made. Um, if I want to select more than one file at a time, I can hold down the control key on my keyboard and that will let me select more than one file. If I want to just select one, I just tap on it, and then you see how it turns blue and has that bounding box around it? That means that's the only one selected, and I can right click and say delete, or I can pick delete from the top in the ribbon here. So I'm going to go ahead and click delete, and it's going to go ahead and delete. So you don't get anything that asks you if you want to delete a file at this point. It, the computer knows, it just says, okay, I'm putting it in the recycle bin for you. So I can go ahead and click again, and I could right click and say, delete. That's gonna send it to that recycle bin, okay? If I wanted to recover that, if that was an oops, and I didn't actually mean to delete that file, I can come under the recycle bin, open the recycle bin, and then I can rescue that file, okay? So to rescue it, I'd right click and say, restore right click and say restore. Then if I go back, it's gonna go right back to where it was. So it's gonna go back into applications and to app to target, okay? Now let's say I wanna, I didn't mean to do that. I select both of them and I hit delete. Takes them out of the folder, okay? Now they're in the recycle bin. If I right click and I say empty recycle bin, or if I open it and I say empty recycle bin, that first choice here on the left hand side, and I can say, yes, I really do want to permanently delete these things. I can say yes, and that's going to delete it out of your recycle bin. Now, if you have a lot of stuff in your recycle bin that you've deleted, but you haven't emptied the recycle bin, those are still taking up space on your computer. So when we get to file storage and we talk about how much space you have that you can work with, if they're sitting in that recycle bin, one of the first things to do is to empty that recycle bin and finally get rid of those files because it does take up space. Okay. Any questions about the recycle bin? No. Okay. We're going to go ahead and move on and talk about the frequently accessed files and folders. Um, if you've listened to this workshop before, I usually like to say that my desktop, which here is blue, on mine at home I have a picture of my kitty cats, and I like seeing my kitty cat faces. So instead of me putting everything on the desktop, where granted it's easy to see it, I can't see my cute kitty faces if I do that. So what I tend to do is I tend to use frequently accessed files and folder tips and tricks to get to my stuff, okay? So one thing you can do, if I'm in my applications, let's say I know that I'm gonna be working on these apps to Target and Walmart for the next couple of weeks. They're due in three weeks. I wanna have access to them immediately. I can pin them to the start menu by right clicking and saying uh, pin to start. Does everybody see that? That second list of options, second uh, row of options there, or second column of options, pin to start. If I pin that to the start menu, what that does is when I come over here to the start menu, which is where the four little uh, windows are, you'll note now that app to target is right here. Okay, down at the bottom here. So all I have to do is click on that folder, brings me right to the folder, and I can jump right into my cover letter or my resume. Okay, so that's how to pin it to the start. So that way my desktop is still pretty clear, I can still see my kitty faces, but I know I'm gonna use that a lot, so I'm just gonna go one click to get to it, okay? If I want to do that with file within File Explorer, I can also do that in File Explorer if I open File Explorer here, remember we have this quick access menu, and the if you see these little pins here, the little pins here mean that I, or the computer by default, has pinned these folders or spaces, places on your computer, like your cabinet, at your filing cabinet at home, where I then could put stuff that I know I want to have access to very easily with basically one click to get to them. Okay, so I can do the same thing. So right now, this quick act, these three down here are just because these are recently accessed from the computer. But if I wanted to pin something, I certainly could. 
So what I could do is I could come to the desktop and say, all right, you know, I have to get into applications. I have to get all the way into cover letter to find this file. I'd rather just pin it here in quick access because I know I'm going to be tweaking it um, occasionally for the next however many weeks. So I can right click and I can say, um, sorry, I can right click and then I can say pin to quick access. Where am I at here? Um, sorry, let me go back one. Uh, yeah, so here I can pin the folder where I can pin the folder to quick access. So instead of having to go through to desktop, to applications, and then open them from there, I can pin it to quick access. It's the third option here. And then you'll see that now the apt target has a little pin here, which means it's, it's there in quick access. So if I close out of this, and let's say I open something else, and I open another folder, and then I come back to File Explorer, it's still gonna be right here pinned and I can just tap on it and get right into those. Okay, so if you do use um, a nesting folder system, just know you can pull one of those and pin it so that you don't have to go down quite as many ways in nesting them, okay? Um, you can also create shortcuts to files from anywhere and place that on the desktop instead of the actual file. So you can create a shortcut. This is what you can do to pro cut into Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge. So I can also do a shortcut to a file. So if I came in here and let's go back to our applications, let's go to desktop, applications, and let's go ahead and take and make a shortcut to our app to Walmart. So if I want to make a shortcut to a file in here, let's say we're going to go and create the shortcut to um, the resume for Walmart. We can right click and then we can say do, 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 create, it should be create shortcut, which is down here toward the bottom. Okay, create shortcut. Now it's created the shortcut for me. I can drag it and drop it here on the desktop. So now I have a shortcut. If I click on it, I can get right into that place. So if you have, this works better if you have a folder, like remember how I said if I had my budget folder and in my filing cabinet, I would put it at the very front. I could do the same thing with the desktop here where I have one shortcut that takes me to all of the files in that folder as well, okay? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Any questions about frequently accessed files and folders and where you can put them? Not so far. Okay, feel free to let that kind of absorb too. Um, we are gonna switch now to talking a little bit more about the theoretical side of things um, because now we've kind of gone through all the technical stuff that you can do of where you can place things, how you can get to them easily. And now we're gonna talk about how you might wanna actually organize everything, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and jump back to the PowerPoint here. Um, put that back up there. And I'm gonna share my screen and share the PowerPoint again. We'll come put that down below here. Um, and all of this, of course, is in, is in the handout too, about how to search, how to find everything, how to use recycle bin, the frequently accessed files and folders. And now we're gonna talk a little bit about what to consider. So for me, I like to think of my computer a little bit like my closet. So we're gonna shift a little gear here from talking about the filing cabinet itself as our physical location to a closet. And that's because for me, I have to organize my closet so that when I get up in the morning, I don't have to think too hard about how to find the shirts that I wanna wear or the pants or the shoes. So. I like to organize my computer in a little bit of the same way, okay? So I group all of my dress shirts together. I group them by season first, then by uh, type of shirt, if they're short-sleeved or long-sleeved. Um, then I do it by color, and then I organize them by size, and then style. I usually do style before, so style of, you know, uh, short sleeve, long sleeve, three-quarter sleeve, for example, okay? 
And if I haven't worn a shirt in a long time, I go ahead and actually put it in a different location because I'm like, you know, maybe I'm going to donate that to um, a, a local charity or organization uh, because I haven't worn it in a long time. It's still in, but it's still in good condition. So I will move it to another section of my closet. Okay. Then I have to think, oh man, I have these dresses that I haven't worn because I haven't had an occasion to wear them. But once an occasion arises where I wear them, then I have to make sure I have those dresses. So I have some dresses that are separated out in a second section in the closet, right? Um, is it something you only need every once in a while and you want to keep it because you know you're going to need it at least every once in a while? So think of files as being similar to your items of clothing in your closet, okay? And your shoes, right? Do you have shoes in the closet? Or are they all stored in the front hall closet instead of the, the closet in the bedroom? Um, are they all in one area? Do they have a shoe rack? Are they grouped by color or style or both? There's the, the biggest thing to take away from this is, this is unique to you. There's really no right or wrong way to do the organization of your files, um, just like any other place that you would organize in your house, right? There's different theories, and if it works for you, it works. If it doesn't, then you can abandon it. Um, you can make small tweaks or you can make big moves to change your entire way that you do things. Um, if you like what you already have though, again, these are just ideas. You don't have to employ them unless you want to. Um, but I think of my files in the same way here. So I have files for, you might split things up. Let me move on to the next slide here. So you might split things up based on the structure of what's going to work for you. If you have uh, an organization that you work for and they already have a filing system that they ask you to use for your computer files, that's great. You can follow that at work. Maybe you come home and want to do a different filing system for your home files. Um, you might organize things by date, might organize them by subject or topic. You might organize them by file type. I know someone who puts all of their, um, their PowerPoint documents uh, in one folder that's just labeled PowerPoints. That, that works for them. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and you might keep your personal stuff separate from your professional stuff. Um, sometimes things happen automatically. If anyone with a phone could probably uh, attest to this fact that Google and Apple with um, Android phones and uh, iPhones, they automatically go ahead and organize your photos by date that they were taken. So Sometimes that's what you want, sometimes it's not. Sometimes maybe you'd rather have all of your cat photos in one location labeled as cat and then by date. So it kind of depends on what works best for you. <coughs> Excuse me. So some things to consider. These are sort of our best practice suggestions based on everything that I've read. <coughs> Excuse me, over the years. It's a good idea to not keep everything on the desktop. Things that you really want on the desktop, fine. Um, but not everything can live there because there's only a finite number of those spots for folders and programs. Uh, someone I talked to creates an inbox folder on the desktop and then all the files they create during that week go into that inbox folder. And then at the end of the week, Friday, um, at the end of their work week, they take, 10 minutes and sort all of those inbox fold folders, um, files that are in that inbox folder and sort them and place them where they need to go in their organizational system. Okay. Uh, at the very beginning, we had talked about a little bit about the downloads folder. Anything that you download from online goes in, will first go into that downloads folder. So it's good to check that downloads folder occasionally and move things from there. Delete them if you don't need them anymore. Organize them if you do. Okay, using a naming convention that works for you. I know someone who they name everything that they've created with their initials first. So <laughs> for example, it would be SW underscore resume or SW underscore cover letter, SW underscore, you know, whatever. Um, so that that way they can easily find their files that they've made. Uh, do understand that abbreviations only work if you remember what they mean. So if you're going to abbreviate something, you know, for example, I work at Champaign Public Library, so maybe I'm going to use CPL 
at the front of all of the things that are related to work files. Um, it makes it easier to search when I'm using File Explorer to say CPL, but then everything I've created for work comes up. So keep that in mind too. Um, descriptive is better, but too descriptive isn't. So when you're naming things, consider, you know, you don't just want image one, image two. Puppy one is great, but maybe it should be puppy one in the grass or, you know, whatever else. Okay. Uh, utilizing that's the search function in File Explorer. Uh, if, you, if you don't remember where it is, that's one of the best ways to find it is using the search in File Explorer or the search in Windows 10. Um, and then trying to not over nest folders and files. So you have, you know, I have photos. So I have a folder called photos. Then I have a folder for each year. Then I have a folder for each month. Then, then I go by date within those, within those folders, okay? Um, it helps me easily find photos if I remember when something happened. <laughs> if I don't remember when something happens, though, then it takes a little bit longer to get to it. Um, and that's just because for me, date is an easier way for me to work things. That may not be true for you. For you, it may be you have a big one that says photos, and then you have one that says people, and one that says animals, or one that says vacations. Just depends. Okay. Um, it is important to schedule time to clean up and back up. Okay. And we'll talk about that more next week when we talk about storage as well. Um, but it is good to, I do this once a month where I go and back up my files and try to clean up what's in the downloads folder that I don't need anymore. So I do it once a month. You could take, you know, do it once a season. It, it just totally depends on, on you and what works for you. Okay. Uh, we are pretty much at the end here. Um, thank you everyone for sticking with us for the hour and a half today. Um, here are some additional resources from online that I used a little bit of these to mix in. Um, and again, these are different ways for managing your computer files, um, creating, I like the one that's creating order out of chaos, um, ideas for managing them. Uh, Digital Learn has uh, a lesson on file storage and organization where, you know, talking about helping you move files from one location to another and copying them. Um, and then the Tidy Your Time, uh, 10 Best Practices. This is a, a little bit older article, uh, but it does relate as well. They do a lot of things with, of course, organization in general and then applying that also to the online environment. Okay, any questions? I don't see anything. Okay, um, I do want to mention next week is our intro to digital file storage workshop. And then after that, we'll be focusing in October, we'll be focusing on um, handheld dev mobile devices. So your tablets and smartphones. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, library resources uh, for eBooks and movies that you can get for those devices um, in October. And then here is my contact information. Too, if you need it and we can put that in the chat as well and then I do want to mention we have our book a librarian service which is basically uh, a chance for you to meet one-on-one -on -one with a staff member to go over anything we've either covered today or other technology topics that are of interest to you we also have live chat whenever the library is open and you can also reach out via email at librarian at champagne.org if you want an immediate response from someone or feel free to email me um, and Rebecca and um, pretty much anyone on our team uh, here at the library can help with uh, technology questions. And I will pull back up my camera here and stop sharing. Um, if anybody would like to see anything demoed again, please feel free, just let us know. We're happy to demo stuff a second time, as I'm sure Chris is also uh, willing to demo things again if needed. Um, but yeah, so if there are any questions, um, if you'd like to speak your question, now's a great time um, to raise your hand and we can take uh, questions verbally too, if anybody has any. And then again, I, uh, Rebecca will be teaching um, courses in January for Mac. That would be essentially the Windows, basically what our intro to Windows computers class was. She'll be teaching that in January and then the intro to file storage and organization for Max too.
questions or comments or anything we can help with? I don't see anything, so I guess we'll go ahead and say thank you, everybody, for joining. If you have any questions, follow up with us later. Yeah, and please do take a look at the YouTube video once it's up. And like Chris recommended, I, I think that's a, a, great, um, a great way to learn is to go ahead and watch and then pause, um, pause the video and go ahead and try to do it yourself and then go back to the video. Um, I do that. I do that myself um, whenever I'm trying to learn a new, a new skill on the computer. Um, I love looking at other people's tutorials and videos and then pausing and going, okay, they did this. Now, how is that done by me now? <laughs> <laughs> so I do recommend that. And then also, of course, you can reach out to us too. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Bye.